Christ. What I know, I know many of God's people have given up a lucrative career. Fine houses, nice cars, retirement funds, all kinds of things that go along with those kind of things. And they gave it up so they could follow the Lord in something specific. Something specific. Not a call to preach. Not a call to pastor. Not a call to be an evangelist. Not a call to be a missionary. But something specific. You say, like what? Oh, how about just being able to raise your family in a, in a God-fearing home, and a God-fearing church. Being able to serve the Lord. Nothing specific, you know. Just bringing your kids up right. Being able to spend some time with them and those kind of things. And pray for them. Be an example to them. You know, nothing, nothing glamorous like being an evangelist. Nothing lowly like being a missionary. I'm speaking tongue in cheek. But you know, just, you know, just some trivial thing like being able to raise your family right. Some have sacrificed family and friends and relationships just to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe there's something in your life God wants you to turn over to Him. Say what? I don't know. I don't know what it might be. It might be your pride. I don't know what it's going to be. Just something just you and God knows about. Your wife don't know about it. Your husband don't know about it. Mom and dad don't know about it. The kids don't know about it. Just something in your life, God says, I'd like to have that. I'd like for you to sacrifice something for me here. Well, Lord, you know, I don't know if I can do that or not. You're just keeping that can down the road. Down the road. Down the road. There's that can. Every time, every time you come to church, there's that stinking can. Every time you turn on the TV, there's that stinking can. The Lord won't leave me alone about it. You say, why? Because you keep kicking the can down the road. If you quit kicking that stinking can down the road and act on it, God might leave you alone. Something specific. Maybe it's a can of sacrifice. Maybe just God wanting you to give something up for Him. Maybe it's a can of service. Look at verse 60 there again. He said, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. You know, when God puts his finger on you and says, I want you to preach, that's a scary thing. At least it was for me. That terrified me to death. Scared me to death. See? You say, why? One of the greatest, one of the greatest fears I had about that thing to preach was, Lord, is this you wanting me to preach? Or is this Dennis Miles wanting to preach? See, I struggled with that. Had a hard time with that. Because I didn't want to preach if it was Dennis Miles wanting to preach. If I was going to preach, I wanted it to be God wanting me to preach. I, didn't, I never had any experience with it. I never knew many preachers or anything like that as far as that goes. I just knew, buddy, that was something serious. It was something not to be took lightly. And it wasn't something just to get in because it's fun to do to get up in front of people and yell at them. Because preaching is a whole lot more involved than getting up in front of a bunch of people and yelling at them. I guarantee you there are people throughout church history that's kicked that can down the road. Maybe it's in your youth. Might be middle age. I don't know. I don't remember the last fellow, I don't remember the oldest fellow I ever, I ever ran into that his calling was, I don't know what the oldest fellow I, I knew when he was called to preach. I don't, know, I don't know what the age of him was. God calls some people fairly young, some folks not so. I was, I was, um, I was 23 years old when I got saved. I was 28 years old when God called me to preach. I was 31 years old when God called me to go off to Bible school. And I was 34 years old when God called me to pastor. You know what I am? And I'm not bragging, I'm not boasting, I'm not doing anything. But I sure am glad I didn't kick those cans down the road. I kicked that can of salvation down the road probably from the time I was about, oh, 11 years old to 23 years old. I, I teach something my mom and daddy didn't, uh, didn't enforce when we were going to church. I teach, that, I teach that, you know, if you got kids, they ought to sit. I like for kids to sit in front of me. Beside of me, they can get away with things. But in front of me, they can't. 
I'm not, this, this is my conviction, okay? <laughs> but if they're sitting in front of me, I'll use my grandkids for an illustration. If they're sitting in front of me and I'm, I'm sitting back here like this and these two are talking, I can reach up here and go, shut up. I know your kids are perfect. They don't talk in church. I sat in the back. I sat back there about where the rain is setting. Back there somewhere in that, in that vicinity of the church that I, was, that I grew up in as a teenager. I sat back there. Mom and Daddy sat up here. They sat up there all their lives. As far as I can remember, they always sat right over in there. <clears throat> but I sat back there. You don't know how many times that preacher would get up there and preach. No brother butler, he'd cry and he'd weep and he'd shed tears and beg folks to come to altar. I sit back here in that stand back here in that pew during visitation, grab a hold of that pew back there, and just sit there, head down, couldn't look up, scared to death. What I kept doing, kicking that stupid can down the road. If I'd have got saved at a young age and followed him then. It has saved me a whole lot of grief. Saved me a whole lot of heartache. Amen, amen. What are you going to do? God dealing with you about something? Something specific? Maybe not preaching. Maybe not, not a mission field. Nothing like that. Just something specific. Maybe just, you know, maybe you got some sin in your life that God's dealing with you about and you need to get rid of it. Maybe it's just an attitude problem. Maybe it's pride. I don't know what it is. It could be anything. But God's dealing with you about it. God's been dealing with you about it. Are you going to do something about it? Or are you going to kick the stinking can down the road? All right. What about the can of shedding the past? Look there at verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. That can of shedding the past. Some of God's people can't quit looking back. Paul said in Philippians 3.13, the last part of the verse, he says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Forgetting those things which are behind. Now, it's good to remember some things of the past. It's good to remember where your country came from. It's good to remember when you got saved. It's good to remember when you surrendered this or that. It's good to remember those kind of things like that. But dwelling on the past back there and what could have been and those kind of things, you don't want to get in that trap. And too many of God's people looking in the past, and the Lord addresses that thing there by that man putting his hand to the plow and looking back. Now, maybe you had to be raised on a farm. Maybe you had to be raised around farming to understand what that thing's talking about. Maybe you had to be like me and you grew up on a farm and you didn't have a tractor. Your daddy plowed with a mule. We didn't have a tractor. And you got that mule out there and you got him and I, and I didn't, I never did get behind the range of that thing. I was too little back then to, to, to be in the range behind a mule when I plow in front of me. But I sure did follow that thing along knocking the, knocking the dirt off the, off the uh, uh, the corn that, that, that he'd covered up, you know, and plowing. Following along, you know, thinning the corn out and those kind of things. But you got that, pl you got that mule out there in front of you, and you got to keep your eye up there. Especially when you're first starting, you got to get that row straight. Keep it on that seam right there. You pick you out a rock, or you pick you out a tree, or you pick you out a fence post out there someplace or maybe you've got a marker out there on purpose and you get behind that thing and you holler, yep! You get up through that thing, you know, and that mule starts straying off this high and you holler, haul! Pulling left a little bit, goes to the right, you holler, gee! Pull over that way a little bit and you say, what are you doing? You're keeping, you're keeping your eye on that mark and you're keeping that mule going that straight direction. And if you're like this, I wonder what Dennis is doing back there. That mule will be all over the place. That plow will be all over the place. You'll be plowing up corn. You'll be plowing up beans. You'll be plowing up everything. You say, why? Because you've got to keep looking ahead. And the Lord says, listen, you can't be looking back. You've got to keep looking forward. You've got to keep looking ahead. For some people, it's what they used to be. 
Some, some of God's people can't get past what they used to be. Sometimes it's their wicked life. They can't get past that thing. Well, how could God use somebody like me? And Preacher, you don't know what I've been in my life. And all those kind of things. And all that kind of stuff. Listen, have you ever read through that book and seen what some of the people did that God used? You realize that? Don't you realize God can use anybody that will get saved and follow him? God can use them. You say, but preacher, God can use you. For some, it's that. For some folks, though, it's what they used to have. I didn't have to give up a lot. I, didn't have, I, haven't, I, haven't had to give, I don't think I've had to give up a whole lot to, to do what God's wanted me to do in life. I don't feel like I've given up much of anything, to be honest with you. But I know people that have given up great, great amount of stuff, positions, wealth, nice things, in order just to follow the Lord. For some, it's what they could have had. But the problem is they keep looking back instead of looking ahead. You say, what are they doing? They're kicking the can down the road. Instead of, instead, of, instead of going forward, instead of forgetting that past and letting it go and letting it be, let it be under the blood of Jesus Christ, forgetting the things that they had way back when, you know, and how nice they had it and all those kind of things, they, they keep looking back. Quit looking back. Make up your mind today that you're going to quit looking back and you're going to move forward. Any of those things fit you this morning? I knew when I started this, wasn't, I knew when I was working on the message, you weren't going to be shouting hallelujah, glory to God. So I didn't expect any of that this morning. I expected it to be just about as quiet as it's been. Actually, I probably got more comments than I thought I'd have got. Any of those things fit you this morning? What are you going to do? You see, I can't make that choice for you. Youngins, mom and daddy can't make the choice for you. Husbands, wives, your spouse can't make the choice for you. You say, who's got to make the choice? You either got to act or you got to kick the can down the road. Ain't you about tired of kicking? I've had about all this can I want. I'm going to kick it off and give it to Brother Dickerson. That wouldn't be near as fun to kick. You ought to just pick that can up. Throw it in a trash can. Quit kicking it down the road. All right. Father, I come to you.